So hello, my name's Rob. This is Cattle Rabbit Scale Model Studios and in this video I'm going to show you how to push the skin we did in the last video, uh, which I will link in the corner now, just that little bit further. We're going to show you how to do the eyes, teeth, the gums, blemishes, folds on the skin. Um, I'm not going to show you how to paint the hair because really that's up to you. There's no point in me showing you how to do white hair when in actual fact you wanted brown so really that should be left up to you but the first thing we're going to focus on in this video is eyes i know it's a difficult subject so i'll do my best to explain it and how i do it so eyes they're a pain uh there's no easy way of doing them I, I don't believe there'll ever be an easy way of doing eyes. I have a luxury of working with a bigger model, but my application would be exactly the same as if I was working on something like a Space Marine's head. The colors I'm going to be using are Corax White, and then instead of black for the pupils, I like to use a dark brown, something like Rhinox Hide. Um, a lot of the trouble people get here is not least of it, is making them not look so cockeyed, if that makes sense. And I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about how I do that. The first step, though, is to kind of get the, the, the eyes, you know, the white in the eyes, should we say. Now, you can see that I've turned the model upside down here. The, I'm resting my hands completely on the table. Um, I do shake slightly, but I've been blessed with a little bit of a steady hand just get yourself comfortable. That's the only thing I can really put forward as knowledge or um, a tip on how to do eyes. Small amounts of paint on your paintbrush, make sure you've got a really good point and make sure your hands and you feel comfortable. When you're comfortable, you will shake less because you're relaxed. Turn the model round as you need to. You know, I, the only thing, just don't rush this process. People try and kind of get it all from one angle and I don't always think that's the case. You need to paint the eye, you know, from, from various different angles just to make sure you have got all of it. Be careful not to hit anything um, around the eye, but it doesn't necessarily matter if you do because you can always work back up to it. Um, a good tip would always be paint the eyes first then just work the skin around it being careful. Now, as you can see here, I've gone a little bit onto the eyelid. I'm not gonna worry about that because we're gonna cover that later um, with some shades and things. The next step is the pupil. Now, I think this is where, even if you're neat enough to get the eye uh, painted neatly, finding that kind of balance of it looking at something it's all about perspective of what your model's seeing. There's no point you having him looking to the left when he's got a, you know, he's clearly his head's in motion to the right, depending on what you want. So really it's about finding a perspective on what you want your model to look at. I'm going to have this guy looking fairly dead on because we don't have a rest of the model to paint. And all I do is very carefully, not so much to the center, but just slightly nearer to the nose, I paint a line in. Now these models are incredibly small a lot of the time, so just be careful. And as you can see, I've not gone dead center. And all I'm doing is I'm just building it up ever so slightly, just a little dot each time until I'm happy with the size of the pupil and where it's looking. As you can see there, that looks quite right. If you kind of lose an eye, like put your hand over or your thumb over the other eye and look at it, it will look quite right. The next thing is obviously to paint in the next eye. Always taking in mind of where you want your model to be looking. Once again, I'm doing it dead on. Eyes aren't completely flat on the face, they're slightly rounded. So if I work more towards the nose, you actually find that the eyes look more in the center. Once again, take your time, small amounts of paint on your brush, make sure your brush has a very good point and make sure you are comfortable and relaxed and go slow. Okay, so moving on to something a little bit easier now, gums and teeth, really, really easy to do. I like to use Screamer Pink as I like really pink gums but you could use purples, light pinks, um, 
reds, depending on what your look you want for. No matter what you do, make sure you've got a really good base coat. Now, I like to wash with either Drucci Violet or Caraberg Crimson on this step. I think I'm gonna go for Caraberg because I want a really kind of reddish, pinkish gum. So all I'm gonna do now is give it a really good wash. Just being really careful to avoid the skin around the um, parts we've already completed. But obviously don't forget to do the inside of the cheeks as well. Once again, the application is um, the same and I do apologize for my massive hand uh, being in the way there. Um, just take your time, make sure that it pulls quite nicely. You don't want it swimming, but once again, you don't want to kind of just put nothing on. So just take your time, just being really careful. Once again, I'm going to reapply Screamer Pink. This is just going to brighten up some of the areas, especially like the tongue and things like that. Um, there's really no trick to this. If you're using, say, Corn Red, after you've covered a wash, reapply Corn Red and it will help blend those transitions for the next step of colors that you use. Then all I'm going to do is coming with Pink Horror. Once again, if you find that the transition's a bit too stark from one layer to a next, just put a little bit of Pink Horror in with Screamer Pink, just to kind of soften it and bring it down that level. Paint it in and then come in with some neater Pink Horror or you know whatever highlight you think you've, you've chosen to go with. Um, just take your time work your way around the gums don't worry about hitting the teeth for the minute because we haven't completed those yet but just you know make sure that you've got those highlights where you want them now for the teeth um, something I like to do I like to start with Baylor Brown and the reason I do this is because once we work up to our next color you can leave some of the Baylor Brown showing uh, as you'll see and it gives a great impression of like plaque buildup. So you kind of get this horrible yellow kind of staining. I can't imagine, you know, these guys brush their teeth. If you're going for something a bit more pristine, then I would probably just start at Ushapti Bone, which is the next step. All I'm gonna do here with Ushapti Bone is I'm just gonna leave some of that Baylor Brown showing below, and I'm just gonna to work towards about three quarters of the way up the tooth. Once again, if you find the transition's a bit too stark, could just mix a little tiny bit of bale or brown in. Just working very carefully here um, with Screaming Skull and literally all I'm doing is I'm focusing on the tops of the teeth just to make them look sharp and you know a little bit more um, I guess draw the attention to the mouth and the, the teeth because he's got such a good expression this guy. Um, it shows it off quite nicely and that's teeth and gums really easy and you can use a lot of colors and lastly I'm going to show you how to do things like blemishes tired eyes and things like that for this I always use two colors Drucci Violet or Caribou Crimson um, you could use Magos Purple or the Lupus Pink contrast with a little bit of contrast medium mixed in. Uh, but I, I really like using these shades. I think they give a good effect, especially over my little skin scale that I've, I've got going on. And if you, once again, not sure what that is, do check out the previous video as it's all explained in there. But what I'm gonna do first is using Drucci Violet, I'm just gonna work my way round the eyes. And this is gonna give the impression of kind of like tired, bit worn, bit dated, bit old skin. Um, I, as a principle, I tend to do Drucci Violet for maybe old or dead skin. For Caraba Crimson, I tend to do paint it around things that I want to be maybe sore or have a bit more depth to it. But all I do is I work my way around and much like the uh, like an eyeshadow, uh, what this will do is by making the area around the eyes darker, you're actually bringing those eyes and making them look brighter. Then all I do is I use a little bit of Caribou Crimson. Um, I haven't applied anything over the gums here. This is the skin as we finished it. And this will just taint it to give him a nice set of <laughs> lips. Um, if you are going to do things like nipples and stuff like that as well, I would probably do this exactly the same way or maybe some 
um, diluted Bugman's Glow, maybe. Um, but normally I just paint on a little bit of carrot but crimson. Same here, the inside of the ears. Um, I can't imagine this guy's hygiene's very good, so we're gonna paint some in there and round here. Once again, I do apologize about my hand being in the way. It's going to be difficult um, doing these videos with a camera and I can't really actually see what I'm doing when I'm doing these. Um, but round by the cheekbones, you know, the ears drawing forward to kind of give him that puffed out, exerted look of, you know, adding the, the red around the face, I think really helps it bring to life and gives you a bit of variance with the skin tone. Um, you'll see a lot of people sometimes they paint purples and things underneath skin tones. Uh, really what we're doing here, we're adding them afterwards with reds and purples. A good tip which I'm going to show you here is you can paint in really deep parts. We've got this great vein that runs up this guy's neck. And what we can do is we can put a little bit of water on our brush and we can actually feather out the shade and it will naturally do a very um, just blend for us and transition those colors really, really nicely. And, you know, that's really it. You can see straight away that it's kind of brought, once again, the front of the face to life. Um, here, I'm going to run it into fold at the back and you can kind of see, I mean, you'll see it in a minute, um, it really just brings all those folds to life. It, this is a great, I love this step, it's my favorite part because you can just add so much detail. But that's it for this video. Um, I will do the money shots now. Once again, if you do like uh, my content, chuck a subscribe, a like, a comment, and I will see you all in the next one. God bless and take care.